Oh, sorry, y'all. I didn't know the music was off. Hey, what's up, everybody? Um, I'm still waiting for a few of you to come on. Come on in. <laughs>
everyone, I decided to cut it short a little bit. <laughs> the timer, listen, you know, I have a few things to say regarding this woman, okay? Ah, BLM. There's been so much talk about BLM these last couple of weeks with Candace Owens, Kanye West, but a lot of us in this circle already said they were full of crap anyway because they don't stand up for black women being killed every five and a half to six hours. And they it's all about protecting any black man, whether he's innocent or not innocent. And we knew they were full of crap anyway. Uh, we've been saying that for a long time. I'm not saying that I, I don't understand, you know, the meaning behind it. Of course, black lives matter, all lives matter. But we know that when injustice happens, that's why it was started. I understand all of that. But uh, like I said in a video that was uh, taken down, black lives only matter when a white person takes it. I have never seen any level of outrage the way they do with Black Lives Matter. The marches, they black people don't do that when black children and women and men get killed every week, every day by black men, usually. Where's the outrage? I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty, pretty, pretty amazing to me. So this woman is one of the founders of the BLM movement, Patrice Cullors. She's been in hot water because uh, she made millions of dollars. I don't even, <laughs> she made millions of dollars. Yes, she bought a lot of homes, not in black neighborhoods. And she paid her ex, no, she's um, she's gay, not her ex-boyfriend. Uh, some I think somebody in her family, she gave them millions of dollars. And people are upset saying, they took the money, they took the money. Well, I mean, she is the person who founded the thing. So she has to live, you know, I, you know, but people feel like she's not using the money for the right things. Candace Owens, you know, is saying, oh, she's, it's all a scam. It's all a bunch of bull crap. So look, before I get into it, because uh, more people are coming, I want to start off with some news before we get into this, because I'm not going to be on here too long. I'm just going to share what prison abolition is, why I think it's bull crap, and a few things. But before, again, I do that, let's talk about some things, baby, in the news before I go in just a little bit. Okay, the first thing. I have to share this. As you can see up top, this is before the main topic. We'll talk more about the main topic because, again, more people are coming to view this. I Listen, I had to share these things before we get started. I actually saw this on social media. Yes, this is a real statement. Thelonious. Um, he actually said this. He said... It's weird seeing black women spoiled because it just doesn't look right to me watching them depend on anyone. I don't know. I'm just used to seeing black women handling everything. You know, this is the evidence that a lot of black women are not crazy. You know, that to a black man, seeing us get spoiled and well watered is not natural looking to him. You see what I'm saying? They want us to be soldiers and then complain when we act feminine. Oh, you're too soft. You're acting like a white woman. You're too dainty. Oh, you need to be strong, sister. You need to hold it down. You need to fight. That's what you're here to be, a fighter. Fight for me. Fight for me. But then you're too aggressive. See, this is why I'm leaving you for white women because she knows how to be soft and vulnerable and dainty and not all that yelling and screaming and hollering. But that's what you need to be, black woman, because you're black. You know, you need to put your race first and march out there for me and, and bark at them white men for me. And then I'm going to leave you for his woman. But I need you to be at the forefront. And when I see you get well watered and actually treated like a freaking woman, this is abnormal to me. This is abnormal. What do you mean you're getting taken care of and treated like a girl and actually spoiled? 
You're supposed to be spoiling me, not the other way around. This isn't natural. I'm used to seeing all the other races of women get taken care of. You know we don't do that usually for a number of you. And now that I see this, this is just not natural. How dare it? No. Again, it's weird seeing black women spoiled. It doesn't look right to me. Damn, man. That's how you feel about the black woman? You're so used to seeing us in a position of a man that when you finally see us being treated like how a woman, how a girl is supposed to be treated, it don't look right to you? It don't look right for us to be treated like, you know, the other groups of women, like a flower, a precious flower that needs to be taken care of and that we do cry, that we are soft. We're not all mean and aggressive like some of you love to paint. It's weird because then you'll say, well, I'm leaving you because you're aggressive and not soft. Now you see them being treated soft and this don't look right to you. He has that sm that little sad face up there. Is he kidding me? I would never if his guy if this guy ever sees this, honey, you could never be my man. You could never be my man because he's saying a mouthful. He doesn't treat black women like a flower. I wonder if he dates black women, how in the hell does he treat them? Because to you, it ain't natural for her to be spoiled. Damn. Really? Really? Just horrible. So I wanted to uh, share that post with you. All right. The next thing that I want to share before we get started, Wendy Williams. You know, people talk about Wendy. I respect Wendy. She came very far in her career. Okay. And, um, Ever since her man did her dirty, she's been downhill. Ever since her man did her the way he did her, it's it's just been a it's been a disaster, you know. And the bank Wells Fargo reportedly, allegedly, is not giving her her money, and she has to depend on other people to help her pay her bills. She's lost a ton of weight. She's been looking real sickly, you know. Now she's in rehab. She she did confess before that she used to do drugs back in the day, like cocaine and stuff like that, and. I'm not saying she is doing it, but there's a high probability that she got back on drugs. And, you know, that's why she's in rehab and stuff. She's battling drug addiction. Uh, I'm not going to say it's a fact, but that's probably what's going on. I mean, that happens all the time to people who struggle with drug addiction and um, going through a mental mental breakdown, you know. Um some people are happy about seeing her downfall, and I'm disgusted by it because, to me, Wendy Williams didn't do anything different than anybody else in the entertainment industry. She is a news gossip person. Nobody tries to take down The Inquirer or In Touch Magazine, those white publications. So because Wendy Williams did the same thing and she's black, oh, how dare she? Yeah, it's good she's suffering because you actually had a talk show where you talked about celebrities and gave your opinion. How dare you? Seriously, are you serious? I'm not saying that Wendy Williams is perfect, but I didn't wish her downfall just because um, some celebrities were in their feelings about her giving her opinion about crazy stuff they might do. Um, I'm not saying she's a 100%, you know, a perfect person, but I feel like why does she get bullied for doing the same job that other groups of people not black do who cover celebrity stories? Seriously, well, she got to bow down to every black celebrity just because she's black? I'm not saying Wendy ain't never been messy before, but that she ain't no different than Howard Stern. Howard Stern says stuff to get people riled up. That's a part of their job and career. I do understand that you still want to be considerate because they are human beings still. And you don't want to spread lies about people. But usually she just talks about what they do and then gives her opinion. And now people are saying, yeah, y'all see how skinny she is now and how sickly she looking? Yes, yeah, Wendy's karma. I'm like, what, what did Wendy Williams ever really do to anybody? 
that bad. I mean, somebody tell me. But it's good that Wendy Williams is uh, recovering. You know, I wish her the best. I hope that Wells Fargo gives her her money and that she has a good love life after the way her man, what he did and stuff like that. So, okay. And speaking of blogs, Cardi B, listen, mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Ah, the judge has ordered Tasha K to pay a total of $4 million to Cardi B. Cardi B uh, tried to go on her bank account and they claimed that it was only like a thousand dollars in there. Um, I don't know how true it is, but reportedly Tasha K is in Africa. Tasha K reportedly relocated to Africa and took her money with her so Cardi B couldn't take her money. Now, I never talk much to uh, much about it, but you do have to be careful as content creators and celebrity news bloggers. That's why you want to say allegedly if you don't know something to be true. Cardi B is a Libra like me. Cardi B doesn't need her money. Cardi B wanted to make an example out of her. You, you F with the wrong one. Reportedly, Tasha K had said that she had some type of STD that wasn't true and that she was feeling uncomfortable even being intimate with her husband and stuff. And she was saying all types of stuff that wasn't true. And she asked Tasha K to stop saying it. And Tasha K admitted reportedly that it was a lie, but she kept doing it. And then Cardi B said, OK, I'm, I'm going to show you. Don't F with me on, on a certain. I got no, nah. you know, and um, she took her to court and she won. And um, it's unfortunate. And I tell you, I covered Tasha K about a year, a year and a half ago or so when she had Kevin Samuels on her show, praising his ass, talking about I was raised with a bunch of men. And you I'm not saying that Kevin Samuels um, didn't say anything that I haven't said before or anything untrue sometimes. And sometimes he was a complete butthole to women and disrespectful, cursing women out, out the blue, putting pretty women that come on his show down because he didn't want them to actually know and think they were pretty. All types of stuff. I've seen it all. Hot messes coming on his show. I've, I've agreed and disagreed with him. But the way that she butt kissed to him and praised him not knowing how he has treated women, innocent women on his show was disgusting. And I could say a lot more, but, you know, it's unfortunate what happened to Tasha K. But um, I don't know. I believe Cardi B is going to end up taking. Um, I believe she is going to end up getting his getting her money. Seriously, the court has ordered it. And uh, I don't know. Tasha K is very successful on here. Some people are saying she doesn't have it. She doesn't have four million. I think she probably does, but maybe that's all she had. But Tasha K was so successful. I think okay, if Cardi does take the money, you can easily get it back because you're like one of the biggest content creators on here. So, you know, it doesn't mean it, it has to be over. So, mm -mm 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 -mm. hopefully she doesn't do that in the, you know. All right, so the next thing I want to share with you, I saw this on TikTok, and listen, I want, listen, let me calm down. This man right here, you see that girl? She, I guess she, she's an adult now, or she's still young. She's still young. She showed his face. This is the man who RAP'd her since she was five years old. She put him on blast. I'm putting his picture up here because maybe somebody out there, you know him. This is what he did to her. She said, this is day one of me sharing my truth and bring, bringing awareness to the monster that awed me from ages 5 to 15. I will never be silenced. I deserve justice. Yes, I believe that if this has happened to you, the court should still be able to take him to prison. If they can take R. Kelly to prison, then why can't they take her to prison? You know, if I'm not heard of prison, but if they can put R. Kelly in jail, then why can't these older R's go to jail? Seriously, I would like a real legit 
uh, answer to that question from somebody in, in the uh, in the justice system. If you can put R. Kelly in jail, try to put Michael Jackson in jail, then why can't you put these men still walking the streets in jail who have done this? I mean, five years old, a baby, a little girl, a grown man could possibly ruin her insides to where she can't even have kids of her own, a baby vagina. Oh, hell no. So I'm happy that she did this. I don't know if he's related or anything doesn't matter. She got the picture. She's got multiple pictures of him on TikTok showing his face of the monster who did this to her. Okay, I don't know what state she lives in, but there you go. Okay. All right. The next thing. A lot of you that love to eat your seafood, your crabs, that won't be happening, baby. The Alaska snow crab, the season has been canceled after one billion crabs disappeared. Do you hear what I just said? Never in history has this happened that we know of. One billion crabs disappear where people who love to eat the snow crabs can't eat them because there's none left. See, some people were saying, well, what happened? Did we eat all of them? Did we eat the snow crabs? And we didn't know we were eating them all up? Well, this is what uh, was said about the situation. Okay. It says, it looks like snow crabs might not make it to the menus after one billion of them have somehow disappeared for the first time in history. The Alaska Department of Fish and Game has canceled the winter snow crab season due to the lack of product. Scientists say beyond the issue of not being able to eat the beloved food dish, they are pointing out concerns about the health of the Arctic ecosystem. CBS News reports the disappearance marks a 90% drop in their population. I told y'all, I, listen, I've been talking about climate change for a number of times. A scientist says disease is one possibility. Okay? He's investigating the whereabouts of the crabs, highlighting climate change as a possible factor. What did I tell you? I told you that when the ice starts to melt, bacteria that has been locked away for thousands of years is going to get into the fresh water system and that the fish and the seafood is going to eat it and get all types of diseases and we might get diseases because we eat them. And people don't think climate change is serious. Now look, y'all literally, I don't eat crab, but a lot of y'all love snow crabs. You can't, 90% gone for the first time in history. It, they said environmental conditions are changing rapidly. We've seen warm conditions in the Bering Sea the last couple of years, and we're seeing a response in cold adapted species. So it's pretty obvious this is connected. This It is a cannery in the coal mine for other species that need cold water. Y'all think it's a game. This is just one sign of what's to come because humanity refuses to fix this. Now, the Alaska snow crabs are gone the first time in history and they're not coming back. Because disease and climate change. I told you. I told you, once the animals start dying off, it's a wrap. It's a wrap for us as humans. We, we're next. It's just the natural order of things. But y'all don't want to believe it. Y'all don't want to believe it. Y'all seeing the signs right now. Y'all, I don't know what's going on. I'm not talking, not all of you in the chat, but humanity as a whole. All this crazy stuff is happening and people just will brush it off. I remember I got made fun of when I panicked about all the fish that showed up dead a few years ago. But um, seriously, now this is hardcore evidence. You know, if they're not reproducing the crabs, you're not going to have none of these crabs to eat. 
90% gone. Okay. The next thing I want to share. Circle K gas stations in Florida will start selling weed. I'm not against it completely. I definitely support uh, medical marijuana, uh, mental health and medical purposes. I do think that I hope they don't sell it to teenagers, you know, only adults. Um, I don't like the smell of weed. I don't smoke weed. I think it smells disgusting, like some type of old crunched up booty with some other weird, nasty smell. It smells like ass on crack or something. I, I can't even put it into words. I know the smell of weed. We know the smell of weed. You can smell it in the air when some people smell it. It smells disgusting. That's why I don't date men who smoke weed because you will not be around me smelling like that hot ass. I don't think so. And something else I can't describe. So, yeah. But I understand if you need it, if you're sick, you're going through a mental health crisis. But not everybody can smoke weed. It can unlock something in the brain where you can go insane and stuff like that. So they definitely need to be on top of who they give this out to. Okay. This was a mess. Lord. Mm -mm 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 -mm. This was in Chicago. She chopped up the landlord and put her in the freezer because she was getting evicted. I heard all about the eviction thing going on. And some people celebrating because, oh, these black women getting evicted. Ha, ha, ha. That's what you get. As if some of these men are not living uh, from with woman to woman. Okay, please. But I can't. I, she should not have done this. I mean, what? Why? what's the point? Why would you kill her for? You still, I mean, are you serious? I'm, I just... That picture of her on the left, she looks so sad and like she knows she wrong. And the picture on the right, she was just, she never saw it coming. That woman is old and that's how she had to go out getting chopped up and put into a freezer. I, I mean, seriously, I, couldn't she have called a relative or something and asked to be housed? What good was chop killing her like this going to do? Did she not think she wasn't going to get caught? The landlord has to collect the rent. She has to answer to somebody. Eventually, people are going to know the landlord is missing. You know, I don't know if she's going to plead temporary. Now, nah, you can't even plead insanity with this because it takes time to chop somebody up. Okay. Now, if somebody's in, it snaps and then shoots somebody in insanity. But no, she chopped her up. This is just terrible. There's not much I can say other than please do not do this, y'all. If you're going to get evicted, just Lord, try to try to find housing somewhere else. Don't resort to something like this. Okay. This is sick. This 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 guy is in, is a janitor. He infected a woman with an incurable STD after urinating in her water bottle. Intentionally, yes. They have it all on video. Now she has an STD she can't get rid of because he put his penis on the mouthpiece and, and peed in her, in her water bottle. Yes, y'all. Okay. A janitor is accused of sticking his penis inside a female employee's water bottle and peed in it, infecting her with an STD. He's a sick man. He's 50 years old. His name is Lucio Diaz. Authorities charged him with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. This was in Harris County, Texas. After finding evidence that he put his penis in the woman's water bottle. Okay. He confessed to putting his penis in her water bottle because he knew she would drink it the next day. He said that he did it out of malicious intent. So he admitted it. 
He said this was a sickness. What? He said he didn't remember how many times he put his penis in her water bottle before. He did not know of any diseases he could have. Yeah, because at 50 years old, he hasn't taken his ass to a clinic to get an STD check. He is a Mexican national and is being held by ICE without a lawyer. The investigators concluded that he gave her an incurable STD. She said, he gave me an STD I will have for the rest of my life. Nothing is going to change it. Nothing will make it better for me. In fact, I feel like for the rest of my life, I will have to be careful. Well, you think you would have to tell a man that you have an STD. I, I assume he gave her herpes. You can't get rid of herpes. His penis, he put it, when she went to drink the water bottle, the herpes blisters and sores and pus and whatever um, probably was around the part you got to suck, you know, drink out of. That, or when he peed into the water, something came out of his hole. I don't know if you can, if, if this, I, I, I don't know if it's herpes, but. I'm assuming that that's what it is. Give that motherfucker the death penalty. And he admitted that he kept doing it more than once. And he meant to do it. He said that I got a sickness. He's sick. I'm sick in the head, I guess, but I'm going to keep doing it. Yeah, I meant to do it. He said it all. Okay. I saw this, y'all, on TikTok. Another tweet, well, not a tweet, another post from a black man. He says, we are making other women of other races, single mothers, faster than black women. And non-black men can't do ish about it. Laughing my A off. We are slowly breeding them out. Yeah, y'all, y'all men not black that's watching this. Some of you might judge us black women when you watch our video content thinking, are these black women angry? Are they crazy? Are they right? Are they lying on the black man? I didn't say every damn black man is crazy or effed up. But listen, this is a real message, okay? We are making the women of other races single mothers faster than black women and their men can't do a damn thing about it. We are going to breathe them out. This do you see this? This is this is not a game. This is not a joke. This is a real life message that he said. So yeah. My thing is this. You're you feel like you're breeding them out, but then you complain about all your biracial sons who are lighter skinned than you getting in the NBA or when they choose white women like you, and then your grandkids look white, then you might feel a certain way about it. Not everybody cares about that, but some of you do. And you're so busy chasing behind other races of women, you leave your own women behind unmarried. You just make no sense. You are a disaster. And um, huh, what can I say? I mean, you're only 13% of the population. How can you possibly see? This is why I said a lot of them don't have sense. And then they get mad if women like me say something, but... Seriously, how can you possibly breed out white people if you're only 13% of the population? Wouldn't you breed your own self out if you are the minority? That's only if your offspring only continuously procreate with white people. Now, things could change. They can get with somebody black. There's no rule saying your kids or grandkids or great-grandkids can't procreate with somebody black and then bring the blackness back in. But... Seriously, they make no sense when they say this. You cannot breathe them out, baby. You are 13% of the population. They will always outnumber you. But you too, you too not as smart to not understand about how numbers actually work. Then on top of that, some of you raise your, your very handsome biracial sons not to like black women. So how are you going to get the numbers up if they're not procreating with us, huh? Did you think about that? Anyway, I ain't even going to get into that. So, okay. Then this. Ah, 
these beautiful Somali women. I, I've had to post this because this might actually shock some people because people only think that it's African American men and uh, a few uh, Caribbean or Afro Latina. They don't typically think Somali. They don't think Somali and men talk like this. Uh, this Somalian guy, let me see. You see him right there with his white woman. Uh, Dajma Saeed, up top on the left, he said, I suggest my Somali brothers to marry Caucasian women. They are more feminine, affectionate, caring, and submissive. My eight years with my white wife, Carol, has been the best years of my 43 years of life. She taught me to be vulnerable and communicative. God bless white women. This is a Somalian saying this. And I have to say, you know why I posted this too? is because I've had African women call my uh, show. And um, some of them from this region, they have told me that uh, they don't have a word for love. That uh, the men are not affectionate. I mean, seriously, they, they cut off clits over there. But yet you don't understand why they might be fucked up in the head a little bit. If they, if they, I mean, I'm not saying that, um, <laughs> I'm not saying that Somalian women are, but I can understand if perhaps they're not so, uh, what you want after you've mutilated their vaginas while they're like teenagers cutting them up. Um, uh, you can't have public affection. You marry them off at fucking eight years old. You're, you, you're taught to be a mule and a mammy. I mean, this is this is globally with black people. Not only that, it's just weird to me hearing this because African women uh, have a reputation for being submissive. They're known for that. They're known for muling and working more than the men and keeping the family together, doing farm work, carrying that heavy ass shit on their head constantly because the men won't get their ass up and carry it. At least that's what it appears like. You know, but damn, now the Somalian man, you know, a lot of people praise Somalian women and East African women. A lot of black men in America say, I want one of them. If I'm going to go to Africa, I want one of them. You know, they don't necessarily want a woman from the Congo. But, you know, they say that. And now look at what the Somalian man is saying. I want my Somali brothers to marry Caucasian women more feminine really a lot of these somali women look very feminine they're very well spoken they don't have a reputation for being loud and all this other stuff they do their makeup real cute they cover themselves up which is what a number of them claim they want sharifi sharafe sorry if i said that wrong in the chat you said somalian men are abusive as hell okay Caring and submissive. This is a new one for me hearing this from a Somalian because East African women is always being praised as being so beautiful and feminine and friendly and covering up and cooking and holding on to culture. And now this Somalian man is sounding just like the black men in the West. Mm hmm. So, yeah, my Somalian girls that's watching this, I know y'all going to say something about this. Okay. But I do have one good thing to share, and it's shocking. This is pretty shocking, I must admit, because Kodak Black has a reputation. You know, he has openly said he does not want a dark-skinned woman because he's dark-skinned and he does not want his children to be dark like him. That he will date black women, but they can't be his complexion. So, and that rubbed a lot of black women, of course, of course, who are dark skinned, especially the wrong way. Um, but that's how he feels for whatever reason. He's one of thousands, to be honest. But um, when I saw this, I have talked about in the, before how a lot of black celebrities don't, uh, they have all this money. They always whine and about being oppressed and stuff with $600 million and they don't do shit for black people, the black community. So I was surprised when I saw this from Kodak Black. No matter how I feel about, I mean, it, it's his dating life. He can date whoever the hell he wants. But um, 
you know, he didn't necessarily put down, well, I don't know how to say it. I mean, he didn't say anything about dark skinned women, but he, he does not, uh, he doesn't want dark skinned kids like him. And no one has delved deep into his issues, but it's pretty clear. But, you know, what can I say? What can he say? You know, he said it publicly. Um, but I do respect that he did this. Um, that doesn't mean that I'm going to buy his album or that I don't, I don't listen to him now. So, but yeah, he could be a great example for other black people who have wealth, much more wealth than him. He says, um, okay, Kodak Black paid the rent for 28 South Florida families facing eviction. 28 families were about to get evicted before uh, their rent was behind a few months. He said, I paid their rent and for the next few months, so they're good for the remaining of the year. I have to say, I mean, I was surprised to see this. I said that was a very nice thing to do. You know, if only more black celebrities did shit like this. I'm not saying that none of them don't do things. Sometimes you don't always make things public, but you know, it just trips me out when I see people like Puff Daddy crying basically on TV. We gotta make a change. We got this. Let's come. I'm like, you got six or talking about oppression. They do that. I'm like, oppression. You mean the same group of people that paid you $600 million? You got $600 million. Like, if you feel the black man or the black people are so oppressed, then why don't you take your $600 million and buy up an apartment building and place black people in it for free or with low rent? I mean, why don't these black people who are rich as shit, Beyonce, Jay-Z, Dr. Dre, Puff Daddy, I mean, most of them are rich from entertainment. Like, y'all, like, got all this fucking money? And then y'all get on TV talking about black and being how hard it is being black and all this other bullshit. Get out of here. But yet you can't do shit like what Kodak Black did. Like, come on, man. I ain't trying to hear that. And then if you say something, black people, some of them will say, well, they ain't got to do nothing. They don't got to help black people. It's their money. Okay, then shut the hell up about the state of the black community, because where the hell do you think this money going to come from if you always claim you can't get loans from other races of people? It's the black people with the wealth and most of them are in entertainment so they can shut the hell up about black oppression and how hard it is to be black and all this. But yet you got 600 million and a billion dollars, but yet you can't even open up a fucking grocery store in a black area or a nursing home or something, please. I could go in. So yeah, I wanted to share that. And I do support a lot of business owners and this is the third company that I have discovered. Some of you might have heard of them. It is Blanket Pancakes and Syrup. Their products are on Walmart.com, Amazon.com. You can find it at Food Lion Supermarket. And I will be trying their product very soon. I might even do a review. I love waffles. Pancakes is good, but I love some waffles and uh, this is a married couple who started a, their company and I've showed Vicky cakes before. And, um, there's another company I haven't showed yet, but you know, people might be surprised just because I support the swirl doesn't mean I don't want to see black people doing well. It doesn't mean I won't support a black business or a black couple that, uh, is doing their damn thing. You know, I definitely love to see it. Very wholesome, a good company. And I love waffles. So I definitely will be buying uh, one of their products. And, you know, if you want to as well, blanket pancakes and syrup. All right. So now let's get into this Patrice Cullors, the main topic. You know, I <laughs> I hope a number of you are still with me. Okay, give me a second. Um, let me get her picture up. Let me see if I can find a picture. All right. All right, so Patrice Culler, she is the co-founder of Black Lives Matter. And um, actually, hold on for a second, y'all. Let me take. 
Let's talk more about her before I show. Okay. Patrice. Thank you, Fire Sign. Patrice Cullors is, is three black women who really started Black Lives Matter. Uh, two of them are gay. I think all three of them might be gay. I don't care if they're gay. But um, I have to say it's pretty amazing that a woman who would get shitted on by a lot of black men because she's gay, because she's plus size, you know, be, you know, would... Uh, <laughs> She started something that protects black men. Who is that guy everybody keeps talking about? Charleston Weston or something. He's a skinny black guy who, who wears fitted caps all the time. He's pretty popular right now. I don't know who he is or where he came from, but I don't have a problem against everything that he says because he says things that we have said. But people don't want to listen. They like to listen when it's a, when it's a man. You know, Charleston White. I wish that I had that clip up, y'all, because he dissed the fuck out of her. I said I wasn't going to curse, but Lord Jesus, he dissed the hell out of her. And I said, you see, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Exactly what I'm talking about. The black woman will start a movement to protect black men only to have the same black men go in on her for being gay. A slap in the face as usual. I have said it before and it remains true. The black woman will die. The black woman will die for the black man. But the black man won't die for you. He hasn't died for you historically in this country. No, he hasn't. Not at large, no. No. He's never killed and mass he's never mass murdered white men for harming you or raping you or lynching you. They ain't never did it. Now that's just the damn truth. I don't care who get mad. Not in large numbers. But anyway, Charleston Weston Charleston White. They asked him, what do you think about Black Lives Matter? He said, he said, I don't give a F about them gay ass women. I kid you not. That's what he said. I'm like, so you telling me that these gay black women started something to help y'all black ass, ungrateful black asses. And that's how you talk about her. I don't even agree with her bullshit because they don't care about black women. But hey, you would think the same group of men that she went hard for and had a whole fucking movement to get half the damn world saying that your life matters and, and putting everybody on blast every time something happened to you, that you would have some respect for her as a black man, at least, because that's what the fuck she did for y'all asses. But nah, she gay, so fuck her. You see, and I said that. I said this years ago. Y'all will do all this shit for them. And they just gonna shit on you. Y'all, they black men still go in on y'all every week. And y'all the main ones at those protests and marches on their behalf. And for what? They don't marry you. They don't seem to like you. But yet you keep fighting for them. Let them be a man and go fight the white man that they got this beef with. But nah, it's always the black woman coming in as the fucking savior. Then complain, I always got to do everything in this country. Everybody got my back, got me on their back. I got to fight. You ain't got to do shit. Nobody told you to do this shit. Nobody tells you to fight for black men. Nobody tells you to take up everybody fucking cause. I'm not saying it's not good. I'm Look, it is good. We are a part of the world. And I said it before. If we want people to care about us, we also need to care about people. But shit, respect go both freaking ways, in my opinion, too. Don't get it twisted now. Shit, nobody ain't forcing you to do shit for black men. So I don't want to hear nothing about uh, acting like you being held hostage, that you got to do stuff for them. You got to march. You got to. You ain't got to do nothing. They didn't tell you to go out there. But y'all keep doing it only for them to spit on your fucking face. A good portion of them. You willing to die for him. You willing to get your ass whooped 
by other groups of men, the white men, usually the police officers, you go out there trying to be a man and, and go against them and all this other shit. Only for him to say, fuck you and go get the white man's daughter. Girl, please. Shit. I'm not saying they're all like that, but a hell of enough, a significant amount. And I think it was a damn shame how Charleston White talked about her being that. And, and like I said, I don't even agree with her. But she did it for black men. And that's the thing she fucking gets. I told you. I told you, man. <laughs> but I have to say, though, a lot of black women like her are dangerous when it comes to black women. Oh, yes, they're dangerous. You got a lot of black women Democrats who are dangerous as shit to the black woman because they're, I'm telling you, they're down for making laws so that the black man could get out of jail. There was a black man, this just happened yesterday. He just got out of jail a few hours ago and beat the hell out of a, I think she was a white lady. He beat the hell out of her in the park, knocked out her front teeth and forced her to give him head. I kid you not, this happened yesterday. He just got released out of fucking jail and did that to that woman. But yeah, you got a lot of these mammies who are in power. I'm I'm hard, like I said, the, the mammy, as we call them, are in fact the face and the majority of black women, unfortunately. And you got a lot of their asses in politics who are going hard to protect black criminals. Shit, throwing a fucking fit because Kamala actually uh, prosecuted black men criminals. How dare she? Oh, she was supposed to support their asses doing filthy shit because they're black men? That's why I said y'all fucking dangerous. You're dangerous. Imagine a black nation with women walking around like this where he's black. So he can go around arming the children. He can go rob your house and he can beat up the elderly. He's been through enough. He's black. Let him be. The neighborhoods would look like a fucking, it would be a mess. Because you're, y'all, y'all, y'all don't got no sense, a number of you. And yet you claim to be Christian, so-called morally righteous Christians, but yet a black man could beat up people and elderly people and are men and women and children, but yet you want him to get off because he's black or because you went through slavery. All of a sudden that excuses demonic behavior as if other motherfuckers ain't been through slavery. And every time people say that, oh, it ain't the same. Excuse me, do you not know about eunuchs in the Middle East and in India? Where they chopped off their fucking penises and balls, children, and bled to death, and grown men never being able to have families and were the top soldiers and security forces in slavery because they couldn't reproduce with their slave master's women, so they chopped off their penis and balls. Yeah, that happened to Asian men and African men and white men, eunuchs, for a long time. That's pretty fucking brutal, if you ask me. But we like to complain just because we were the longest standing slaves, which is embarrassing. But you got to go talk to the men about that shit. So, you know. But a lot of these women are dangerous. They think they're really doing something. What you would do is, that's, listen, it's already happening. There are certain states where they wanted to get rid of the police. And crime is running rampant. And when the black woman, especially y'all, when you go call the white man cops, please help me. Please save me. I'm in danger. You Nobody comes because y'all crazy asses try to defund the police. And yet the black man is the one committing the crime in your neighborhoods, fool. Shit. But you know what? This is what y'all asses get. Shit. This is what y'all get. This needs to happen to, I'm sorry to say, a certain segment of black women, this got to happen to them. They, it got to happen. The disaster got to happen so that they wake up and say, oh my God, what the fuck was I thinking? Oh my God, lock his ass up. I'm so sorry I said this. They won't be saying nothing when their doors get busted down in a in their black 
neighborhood and the man is trying to are her or the kids up in the house and yet they was talking about defund the police you ain't gonna be saying that if something happened to your ass so mm -mm 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 -mm. but yeah there are a lot of black women unfortunately in very powerful positions who are dangerous to black women and children and the so-called black community, because they are about protecting the black man at all costs, even if he's a devil. Yes, yes, I said it. Okay. So, Patrice Cullors supports prison abolition. Let's look a little bit what is prison abolition. Is she right? Is she wrong? Has she lost her mind? Even more. Let's see. Okay. Give me a second. Let's see. Sorry about this. Okay. All right. She was born in 1983. She's an American activist, co-founder of Black Lives Matter movement, an artist and writer. She created the Black Lives Matter hashtag in 2013. Okay. And she advocates uh, prison abolition and LGBTQ rights. Okay. And she's written two books. Okay. Um... I done told you, says she got her bag. One thing I will say, I respect how she was able to get a movement started. Now, now, if only we as black women could do some shit like this, you know? I definitely respect that she was able to do that. Okay. The prison abolition movement is a network of groups and activists that seek to reduce or eliminate prisons and the prison system and replace them with systems of rehabilitation that do not place a focus on punishment and in government instead. I know this word. Y'all know I can read. I don't know why I'm having a tongue twister. Institutionalization. <laughs> okay, let's just let's just go on. The prison abolitionist movement is distinct from conventional prison reform, which is the attempt to improve conditions inside prisons. What do y'all think about this in the chat? If y'all think she is crazy, leave a number one. If you agree with her, leave a number two. I do believe that petty crimes should not get harsh sentences. But I'm very, very serious and hardcore with my beliefs about rapists and murderers. Okay, so far we have a bunch of ones in the chat. No twos gonna come through? So far, only ones. Hey, Poseidon MGTOW. You know... I do think that the prison system does need to be changed some. I do think that they don't really help people in there. Um, a lot of people who come out reoffend. But what could they do so that they don't? Oh, what do I think about scammers? Yeah, that's harsh too. Scammers and people who rob. Robbers, scammers, rapists, and murderers. Cannibals. That's like the top for me. Uh, I believe in the death penalty for rapists and murderers. I will excuse murder and self-defense or accidental murder, but intentional homicide, cold-blooded murder, you got to go, baby. Especially a rapist. I don't play that if it was me. Someone selling drugs, I'm not giving nobody like years upon years for that shit. Be no, I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm not saying that it's right. Um, someone selling weed, like, okay, hmm, so it says again that it's a group of activists, they want to reduce or eliminate prisons 
honey, <laughs> no, every state needs a prison because every state has crazy, dangerous ass killers and aurists that need to be dealt with. Are you out your mind? and replace them with systems of rehabilitation. I don't have sympathy for a rapist, boo. I'm not trying to rehabilitate a rapist. Kill their ass. That's how I feel. I'm not playing with that. And when I talk about, if I already said enough, so I'll just say rape, holding somebody down and forcing it in, or r and babies, I don't play that. You got to get the death penalty. We don't need to rehabilitate you. I don't think so. No. Okay. Absolutely not. A murderer, you took someone's life. Why you get to live? Hell no. Please. So, but other stuff that's considered smaller offenses, yeah, I believe in rehabilitation. But, I mean, what you going to say to them? They have to come back into the world. And if they can't get a job, half of them are going to resort to doing it all over again. Or hang around their friends who influence them. And they do it all over again. It says that they don't want to place focus on punishment. Uh, uh, Now, some people need to be punished. Okay? I mean, seriously. All right. An, An attempt to improve conditions inside prisons. (sighs) <sighs> well, if it were up to me, I said it before, they need to have condoms in prison because the men are sleeping with each other and these men are effing women, their baby mamas and other women when they come out, giving them STDs and HIV, that is a problem. They need to be tested when they first come in and the women need to be notified of their status. They need to have condoms in the prison and before they are released they need to be retested again and those results sent to their baby mamas or whoever it is they're screwing with okay they need to do that they need to separate rapists and murderers from people who have committed petty crimes such as selling weed but honey they're not making no distinctions up in this they they making it sound like uh we want to protect everybody in the prison. Let's get rid of the prisons. Let's let's just focus on fixing all of them. And it's too harsh. Let's improve the conditions of the prison. You know? No, I don't agree with that 100% at all. Some people need to be punished. I don't have fucking sympathy for a child murderer or a child rapist or a rapist, period but especially crimes against children. I don't have no fucking sympathy for them. They deserve to be punished. Are you kidding me? Yeah, and those freaking um, gang members too. I can't stand their asses either. They do nothing but destroy communities, destroy other people's lives. They, They put all that focus into what colors you can wear and trying to hurt people instead of banding together to do something positive. They're a waste of the fucking race. They're a waste of society. Most of them gang members. I mean, I can see if you had a gang doing something great. But seriously, you want to promote a gang that says you can't wear blue or red and go stab somebody because they wore a color? Get the fuck out of here. Shit. Some supporters of decarceration and prison abolition also work to end solitary confinement. The death penalty. Oh, they don't want the death penalty. And the construction of new prisons through non-reformist reform. Really, girl? Are you serious? You supporting this? Patrice, you are supporting decarceration you are supporting getting rid of the death penalty oh oh, hell no hell no i'm for the death penalty solitary confinement i mean don't they usually put people in solitary confinement when they're trying to like kill up other prisoners or doing something real crazy in jail so this is a whole thing about having empathy 
from some of the worst people of humanity. Now, I'm not saying everybody in prison is the worst. I mean, like I said, you got a mixture of people thrown up in there. Some people who have done petty crimes and some people who have done major crimes all up in there, you know? Fire sign says, let them move in Patrice neighborhood. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. So many of them. <laughs> oh, yes. They won't be saying that. They won't be saying that. Shoot. God, love and freedom says Mammy's love criminals. Oh, yes, because he's black and his blackness makes him. That's why I said, let the devil come back black. I'm telling you, they going they going to love him because he's black. I'm telling you. OK. OK, it says again, some supporters of decarceration and prison abolition also work to end solitary confinement, the death penalty and the construction of new prisons through non reformist reform. Others support books to prisoner projects and defend the rights of prisoners to have access to information and library services. Some organizations such as the Anarchist Black Cross seek total ab abolishment of the prison system. Yeah, of course y'all would. Oh my God. Without any intention to replace it with other government controlled systems. They want the, y'all, they want the criminals to roam free, especially the black ones. Why am I thinking of Umar Johnson and them? I mean, that's how they are. They believe that because the black man has went through slavery, he has a right to rape and pillage and kill motherfuckers up just because he's black. We don't want him held accountable. We don't want our filth. This is why our race is so fucked up because we don't separate the filth. We want to include everybody in our shit. It's all about being black. I see this all the time. We're all black. That's all that should matter. It doesn't matter if if such and such did this. It's because, oh, his internalized. Shut up. It ain't no fucking PTSD. You ain't been no slave. You ain't got no post-traumatic slave syndrome. Shut the fuck up. Y'all just saying that because you can't bear to admit some of us is fucked up. Just like everybody else. Y'all always trying to come up with every excuse rather than to face that you got evil, wicked, dirty, nasty motherfuckers that's black and ain't got shit to do with no fucking white man. Y'all the first people on the earth you claim. What makes you off limits from being fucked up too? Are you serious? Please. Y'all was fucked up before you even got over here in America. Okay? Our ancestors. Like, oh, let's just stop this bullshit. Okay? I ain't saying all of them, but shit, y'all, y'all really are delusional to think that we ne have never had effed up people in our race since the beginning of time. You can't be serious, but you think just because the black man and last time I checked, the black woman went through slavery, too. We were done dirtier than everybody. In my opinion, we had to serve everybody, our ancestors. But you know what? Seriously. Seriously. So they want to, okay, I'm not against uh, uh, people in jail for petty crimes, getting, getting an education in prison and all of that, having uh, access to a library to study and stuff like that, okay? Um, but the anarchist Black Cross, they want total abolishment of the prison system. So basically, they want uh, the most dangerous, crazy people roaming our streets free to kill us and rape us and our children without any punishment. This is what they want. My God. Many anarchist organizations believe that the best form of justice arises naturally out of social contracts, restorative justice, or transformative justice. Baby, I need more detail on what the fuck that is. I, you know, I can look that up myself. I need better detail of what that looks like because they're not for the death penalty. What does justice look like for a person that are as a baby or uh, kills an elderly person or 
uh, brutally kills someone in cold blood or does a drive by not caring about who they shoot and end up shooting innocent children and women and men. They deserve to be running free. I wonder what this rehabilitation project will look like. I'm not I'm not against rehabilitation for some people. But people like this, like I said, they need help. They they think they, they need help. Okay. Scholar Dorothy Roberts, Dorothy Roberts takes the prison abolition movement in the United States to endorse three basic theses. So prison abolition. This is what they stand on. This is the three main things right here. Number one, they, they're they saying that uh, the prison system can be traced back to slavery and the racial capitalist regime it relied on and sustained. So basically, they're saying that uh, having prisons goes back to slavery, the slave trade. Last time I checked, every society has had to deal with the filth. You can't have, you know what, maybe, you know what, listen, there's a state that just had the purge type of thing going on where people are not going to jail. Maybe this is what needs to happen. Like in all the movies we see, just let them roam free and let the best man and woman win, fight for your life. And let's just see how this goes. You know? Let's just see how this goes. That, that's, that's what it sounds like what they want. Let these crazy criminals... Oh, thank you a little bit for the donation. You said if prison becomes abolished, me and mine are taking our passports and bouncing. <laughs> it seems like they're they're pushing for this. I mean, seriously. There are about two states so far that has totally uh, made a number of crimes, serious crimes. You don't go to jail anymore for it. Uh, you don't have to post bond or something, something like that. And you got these crazy ass women. I'm sorry to say there's a few black women Democrats who are out of their damn minds, who are down for protecting criminals, especially if they're black and usually black men. Because they feel they've been son done so dirty that, you know, we need these crazy, dangerous ass black people to roam the streets. You know, they deserve to kill and do all types of stuff because they're black. Girl, please. Okay. Now, whether slavery is a part of how the prison system started, at the end of the day, this is 2022. In modern society, you are going to have something to deal with you, these crazy ass people. You, you have to put them somewhere. Okay. Now, if they want to start a new system with the prison system to help people, uh, rehabilitation, some people and stuff like that, that's fine. But, um, yeah, we also need to deal with these artists and murderers. Okay. So. Number two. The expanding criminal punishment system functions to oppress black people and other political, politically marginalized groups in order to maintain a racial capitalist regime. Let's read that again. Number two. The expanding criminal punishment system functions to oppress black people and other politically marginalized groups in order to maintain a racial capitalist regime. Okay, now, there are so many Black people, pro-Black people usually, who swear to God that they're so special, or if that's a word, than other races, that they're the main target that everybody wants to get for some reason other than anyone else, and that these people who are being locked up are angels who did not, in fact, commit crimes. Now, I'm not saying that there haven't been any cases of crooked ass cops placing shit on black men, uh, usually uh, black men, you know, who haven't who haven't tried to have their quotas fulfilled. 
by targeting people. We know that this has happened, so I'm not going to say that's not true. But you can't tell me that a vast majority of black men in prison are not there because they asked it not commit a crime. And then they'll say, well, it's because of the system. At the end of the fucking day, you got a choice. You so smart. Let me calm down. They claim to be so smart. So if you think the white man is after your ass, then why the fuck do you keep committing crime then? Answer that shit for me. He's watching me, but yet you keep taking your black ass on the corner every day, looking suspicious, hanging around drug dealers. You said that they keep watching you, they after you, but yet you keep taking your ass out there. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to hold back today. Somebody needs to say it. If they're after you to arrest you, then why do you keep doing shit to get arrested? Make that make fucking sense, baby. They're on the corner watching you, policing your neighborhood so that they can get you. Then stay your motherfucking ass in the house then. Has that ever clicked in your brain? Has it ever clicked in the black man's brain that if the white man is trying to lock your asses up, perhaps you need to stay your ass in the house then so that they won't see you outside and target you? Ms. Massini says, or get a job. I said it before, and this black man was arguing with me up on here. I said, why come I don't hear about Africans getting arrested? Why come African black men straight out of Africa, darker skin than you, why aren't they getting fucking gunned down and arrested like you? They fucking from Africa. Why is it always the African-American man out of all the black men ethnicities in this whole motherfucker? It's always the African-American black man. More than all of them. Especially the African man. What is it about the African man who they clearly can see is black? Why aren't they after them? You know what he told me? Oh, it's because they got businesses and they respect them. Huh, so are you answering the question? Are you answering this saying they respect them more because they not doing shit that y'all doing? Is that what it is? Or is the African man in America taking his ass to work and school and not standing out outside from fucking eight o'clock in the morning to 11 at night. Y'all know y'all be doing that. Is, is there a difference between the African man in America as far as how he conducts himself versus you? This has, this is a legit question that nobody has ever asked. I need some answers on why the African man who was blacker than you is not being gunned down like you, is not going to jail like you, is not being targeted like you. Make this make sense because if it's all about being black, I damn sure would expect to see more of them than you. So anyway, a lot of y'all always talking about it's a system. I don't give a fuck if it is or not completely. I do and I don't. Let me explain. If you know what he's doing to you and he's after you, then why don't you do the opposite so that you don't end up in jail? I mean, what's not computing with that? You're standing out on the corner all fucking day. I'm not saying that people don't have the right to stand outside where you live. But if you know that this white cop, you see, he keeps circling every fucking week. Your boys keep getting targeted every fucking week or they bothering you. But yet you keep standing your ass out there. Okay, you keep hanging around men that, you know, sell drugs. Huh? Y'all be doing a lot of dumb ass shit. Y'all do. Y'all know so much, but yet you don't know how to stop getting targeted or to stop the bullshit. I'm serious. They don't make no sense. Now, I understand if you're being pulled over unfairly and then he plants something on your ass. That's some dirty shit. Okay? And I do know that some white men can be charged less 
than black men. Now, Crystal Swirls had said on her channel before that they get less time because white men know that black men like to rape white men in jail. Disgusting. Jesus. So, you know. But my thing is this. If you know that you have a higher chance of getting arrested, if you know you're not going to get a job, nobody will hire you after you have a jail sentence and it's on your record, then why the fuck do you keep doing it, you fucking idiot? Let me calm down. I understand that some people get desperate. Life situations happen. You're starving. But it's easier for a man to get a job than a woman. It's always work for labor. Men are stronger. They're always hiring at construction jobs. People are always needing help to move. People always need the help of a man. Okay? Some of you are too prideful to work certain places. You think you're too fucking good. Or you don't know how to fill out a job application. You don't know how to fucking read. You don't know how to fill, make a resume. Or you won't use the tools available for free to help to help you a number of you you keep hanging around your fucking dusty ass black male friends that you know is doing shit didn't your mama teach you that if they go to jail you go into jail with they ass too you don't know that then when they do stuff y'all crazy asses take the rap for him because you don't want to snitch and then you take your ass in jail for him just so you can end up getting fucking raped in jail by other men catching diseases and shit serving jail time because you didn't want to rat his ass out then you come out and nobody wants to hire your fucking ass and then you'll say the system is rigged it always oh, hard being a black man bitch you knew before you did all this shit that that shit you already knew this shit y'all already know y'all always on the internet talking about how you know so much about the system and the white man this and the system that but yet you keep doing dumb shit to go get locked the fuck up constantly it makes me sick. And then y'all say, well, it's nothing the black man can do. So what y'all really saying is I'm going to keep doing dumb shit. I'm going to keep killing my own people. I'm going to keep doing this to the black woman. I'm going to keep doing this until the white man fix America. Bitch, you ain't never taken over in America. And you know that shit deep within you. You know damn well the white man ain't giving you his shit. You're going to have to fight his ass for that shit. And you ain't got the numbers or the strategic skills or any of that shit, is over. Let me calm down. Shit. You ain't taking over this damn country in my lifetime or your grandkids' lifetime. And you ain't got no plan. I'm sick of it. Y'all just love to keep saying, I'm going to keep being fucked up. I'm going to keep going to jail. I'm going to keep doing this and that. Basically forever. Until the white man apologizes or hands me some power or fixes it. And you know that ain't happening no damn time soon. So basically you telling us you're not going to stop. That's all y'all really be saying. And then got the nerve to shit. Listen, I don't agree with Patrice. I think she's full of crap. Not caring about black women. But I would have at least expected to see black men praising her ass. Since she got a movement started to help uplift your ass. And then some of you give her your, her, give you her ass, what are the, you want to give her your butt to kiss because you don't like the fact that she gay. Yeah, this gay ass black woman started a movement to help you, your cause, and help make you matter. Not black women. Let's just be honest. They don't care about no damn black women. Please. Shit. I can't stand these black people like on this, what I'm reading. Shit, y'all y'all want black people to be free to roam around free killing up other fucking black people and children? Then go fucking move to an isolated island somewhere and start your own shit up. Because as long as you live in America, baby, people that commit crime go into jail. Now, some people of other races commit crime. They just don't always get caught. And yeah, some white people look out for white people. What you expect? I'm not shocked by that shit. Y'all would do the same shit a number of you. You just mad because you can't do it because you ain't got the power. That's all that's that's all it's about. You just want to do what they do. You just mad that you feel like you can't. 
You ain't no fucking better or more angelic than them. Please. Please. All right, number three. Number three. We can imagine and build a more humane and democratic society that no longer relies on caging people to meet human needs and solve social problems. Huh. So they believe that uh, putting people in jail is not the answer. You're caging them up. You're caging the criminals up. It's not going to solve our problems. Huh. Like I said, Cage them rapists up. Cage them motherfucking rapists up. And cage them damn cannibals up. Cage them damn um, elderly beaters up. Cage them damn murderers up, baby. Cage they ass up. And them robbers. Cage they ass up. You know? I'm not against, again, programs to help people because some people do deserve a second chance. Some people can change, but I'm very, I'm, I ain't got much sympathy for a rapist. I'm sorry. Not sorry. And a murderer. Some other stuff, yeah, you can help them with petty crimes and shit. But they don't make these distinctions. They they want them all released. I can't go for that, baby. I'm not going for it. Mm -mm. So, y'all, that's pretty much it for this video. How many people, let me see my phone. I wonder how many people are watching. Um. Sorry, I want to apologize for some of my cursing that I did when I got riled up. Even though, I, you know, I'm passionate. It was well-deserved, the things I was saying, still. I'm still trying. I'm a work in progress myself when it comes to certain things. I'm trying to calm down sometimes. Oh my god all right so thank you locky variant patrice what i will say i respect that you were able to get a movement started even though it's one-sided and you do not stand up for black women killed every single week and children killed every single week, usually by black men, and a very small splash of black women, but typically black men, and you don't make the voices of black women heard as a black woman, I do not uh, think that all black lives matter. I think you only care when another man, usually who is not black, takes it at large. I don't think that you are wrong to be able to collect some money from a movement that you started so that you can live, even though you probably, like someone said, would never live around the same people that you are protecting, the criminals that you advocate for who should be released from jail, no matter what kind of disgusting crime they committed because they went through slavery and they're Black and this doesn't solve society's problems. I don't agree with you 100% at all about that, Patrice. And you marched and ride for black men, and these some of these same black men hate the hell out of you because you are plus size, you are a black woman, and you are gay. And they do not support you, a number of them. Look at what Charleston White said. It was disgusting. Even though he has said some things I agree with, that was disgusting how he talked about you for what you have done for black men. You know, and you got to let this mammy shit go because it's not going to no, It's not a good it's not good for black women, Patrice. And a number of y'all in power and politics. Stop claiming to I'm not, I don't know what your religion is, but some of y'all talking about you Christian women but yet you willing to have black criminals released 
the worst of the worst, the worst of demonic actions and energy, all types of stuff, just because they're black. That is disgraceful. Disgraceful. So, mm -mm 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 -mm. I just had to share this with y'all. I had to share it with you. And um, I hope that you like this live. Anyone new, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Okay. Hold on for a second. Yes, I'm interrupting this video with my little commercial. I have a little announcement. That's that I am doing some life coaching. Many of you love the advice that I give, and I cannot wait to speak to some of you about any problems you're going through, men or women, any secrets that you have that you just can't tell anybody about. You can speak to me for 30 minutes for $30. And the way that you can do this is cash at me. My cash app is in the description box, and um, you can leave me your phone number with your name if you have room in the subject line. I will call you between the hours of 6 p.m. through 8 p.m. the same day or the same week. I promise to speak to you and we can talk about anything again. Again, secrets, anything that's bothering you. I give pretty good advice. And one thing I'm going to tell you is that I'm going to keep it very real with you. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything for you. I'm going to tell you the truth. We're going to have a real conversation 30 minutes, okay? So that's all I wanted to say. I look forward to the people that would love to speak to me for 30 minutes one-on-one. -on -one. So let's get back to the video. Bye. All right now. Thank you, Loki Variant. Fire Sign says, what about starting a Black Women and Children Lives Matter? That is a wonderful idea. But we would need a lot of black women and other people not black to also join in the cause. You know. And I think some would. You know, Black Lives Matter really blew up. I mean, I saw people in other countries protesting, having the Black Lives Matter signs. I wonder how serious they are, though, because, uh, you know, I hear stories of people traveling to other countries and being uh, discriminated against because they're black and stuff. I wonder how serious do they really mean it? Some of the people in different countries, not all of them, but it really sparked a big movement. And I just felt like, why hasn't this type of energy been put into the black community? You know, like a lot of us can come together only when it's to complain about white people. You know, somehow you can mobilize and march and sh set shit on fire and have the news reporters there when it comes to a black man typically being what you feel mistreated, even if you don't know the whole story. But yet we can't seem to do this when black women and children and men get killed daily. I mean, it's pretty amazing and not in a good way to me. So, ah, mm -mm -mm. so I thank you all for joining me again. And uh, check out my video I'll be having soon. Hopefully, I'll be able to have it up. Uh, I've had it before, showing some R&B videos. All right. Take care, y'all. And um, I'm going to have a fun fashion type of video, probably Sunday. Um, I'm, I'm just going to be showing some things. I might try have uh, maybe three things I try on a show, but um, I'm going to be showing some some cute things on a certain website that I think y'all should check out. So thank you, y'all. Bye. Bye, everyone.